In the next part, we're going to focus on getting everything into the database. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new app, select Ionic 4, and we can name this whatever we want. I'm just going to call this Ionic 4 Login. And go ahead and press Create. OK, now we're in our new app. The first thing we're going to do is set up two pages. So we're going to have one page that's the login page. The other page is going to be where you get after you log in. So I'm going to call the first one here login page. And create a new page. And we're going to call that welcome page. So that's the page that you get to after you log in. So we'll start here on the login page, and by default you'll see that there's a header and a footer. So we're going to select footer here and change that to false. That means we won't have a footer on that page. And we'll do the same thing here with the header. And next we're going to drop an image into the page here. This isn't necessary, but we suggest it because you might want to have a logo on your front page here, your login page. So we have a default image right here of leaves, and we're just going to upload our logo. Here we have our Avery logo, and we'll press OK here, and just click on it and press Apply. So now we've got it in there, and we're just going to change this over here to responsive, and that means that it will change depending on the screen size. And now we're going to go ahead and change the class here to login logo. What this will do is it will mean that everything else that has that same class will have the same CSS attributes. So we just put the CSS attributes in here. And these you can change however you want, depending on how you want your logo to look. So next we're going to drop a card in here. And the card will allow us to put other things inside it that have some kind of functionality. So we'll start here with some text. And this will just tell the user what to do. Of course, this is a login form. So we're just going to type in here a little prompt so they know what to do. And we're going to make sure before we go on that we change this to H1. All right, so next in our form, we need a place for them to input the username and the password. So we're going to drop this form component in here and make sure that we get it into card item. And then we're going to drop a second input field in here. And this will be for the password. There it goes. OK, and of course, there's going to be a login button at the bottom of all that. So we'll drop the login button there as well. So let's start to format this a little bit so it looks better. The first thing that we want to do is we want to put some text in here. And this placeholder text will appear when somebody hasn't typed anything in there yet to let them know what to do. It's, it's like a prompt. Of course, we want them to enter their email. So this will say, enter your email. And we're going to change this over here to note that it is required so that they won't be able to log in unless they actually put their email address in there. Where it says type, we're going to change it to email so that later on the system will understand that it's an email address and treat it like an email address. So it'll expect an at symbol and stuff like that. And this is aesthetic here, but we're going to change the icon and give it a little email icon, which is pretty standard for these kind of login forms. And you can see that it comes up gray, so we're going to change that here to success, which means green. And we're going to change the placeholder text so that it moves to the right a bit. and We'll do that by pressing Start here as well. And we're going to do the exact same stuff down here. So the first thing that we'll do 
is change the placeholder text. I'll just delete what's in there already. There we go. And pop in this placeholder text into your password so they know what to do. And change this to required. And we're going to tell the system it's a password so that, for example, when people are typing in their password, it won't be shown. And we're going to change the icon here to a standard icon, which should be a little picture of a lock. There we go. And change it to green, otherwise known as success. And we're going to bump that placeholder text a little to the right by pressing start here as well. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to give these an ng model. And we're basically assigning these so that the database can use them later on. We have to make a username and a password variable. We'll press add. And when we get back to design over here, we're going to tell it over here where it says ng model. We're going to tell this one to have username. And for this one, we're going to make the ng model password. And these, of course, we'll use later on when we connect it up to the database. Moving on to the button here. So the first thing we're going to do is change this to the color of success. And another aesthetic thing that we've decided to do is change this to the round shape because it's absolutely gorgeous. And in the text, we can write what we want, but we are going with login here. Now we're basically done with this page, but we're going to add a background picture to it. It's not necessary, but we think it looks nice this way. And the background is just a picture that will appear behind this to spice it up. You can add any picture you want or whatever. So all the pieces have been added to the first screen now. Now we're going to go ahead and start editing the welcome screen. So we'll just click this tab up here at the top. And the first thing that we're going to do is tell it not to have a footer. Okay, there we go. And we will leave the header here. We're going to change this text up here to say welcome. You can say whatever you like, or you can get rid of it. It's up to you. And then we're going to drop a button in the upper left. And this will become our menu button. So the first thing we're going to do is change it to success so it fits the rest of our design here. Change it to an Ionic menu button, which people are familiar with. And they know they can click that to get to the app menu after we build it. And we're just going to drop a button in here that will become the logout button. Right now, it doesn't look like anything, so we're going to tell it what to do. First, it must be success colored. Thank you. And then we're going to change the location of it. And when we hit primary here, it'll bump it over to the right side. And then we're going to give it an icon. We're going to use the logout icon. And we want to get rid of that button text. It's up to you. But first, we're going to change it to icon only. And we're going to delete that button text. And finally, we're going to give this a background as well. And this gives it some consistency here. And now, all we've got to do is connect these two pages. So when we click down here where it says events, it's basically saying, if you do something, then what happens after you do that thing? The first thing that we're going to decide is what happens with the first button. So right now, we're going to make it so that when you click that button, it submits the form. We'll save that. And then we're going to decide what happens after the form is submitted. And of course, once you submit it successfully, it should go to the next page, the welcome page. And we'll save that. So when you click the button, it submits the form. 
when you successfully submit the form, it goes to the welcome page. And we'll save that, and that's about it for setting everything up. Now the last thing that we have to do is test this. We're going to speed this up. Don't be surprised if it takes a few minutes to compile on your machine. Even if that blue loading bar disappears, don't worry about it. Give it a minute or four, and um, we'll just check now if everything's working properly. So when we click on login, it doesn't do anything because these two fields are required. So we'll put some kind of email in there, and you can still it's, see that it still doesn't work. And we can pop a pretend password in there. And now that it has both of the required fields, it goes to the second page. Of course, the email and the password there aren't in the database uh, because it's not connected, but we know that the parts of the setup are working properly as they should. Thank you very much for watching part one here, and uh, please check out part two to see how to connect everything to the database.